Good morning or good evening and welcome to the IndoSoft Web Studio webinar about SCADA systems for water and wastewater industry. Uh, my name is Fabio Teresino. I'll make a brief introduction about some important features of IndoSoft Web Studio, uh, especially for the water wastewater uh, industry. And uh, I will briefly talk about some case studies that are available to download from the Indosoft website where you can find uh, additional information about any one of the case studies published by Indosoft. Uh, then one of our partners, uh, Bill, Bill Glover from Interworks.net, uh, will describe a real application that he designed and deployed for the water wastewater plant uh, for the city of Rock, and Rock Hill. Uh, he'll describe the background, the situation prior to the automation system, uh, the solution that he designed and deployed there, <coughs> the benefits uh, perceived by the system integrator and by the end user, uh, and the future plans, what the system uh, enabled the, the, the end user uh, to accomplish in the future. Uh, this session is being recorded and uh, we will send a link to download the video to all participants as well as a copy of the PowerPoint presentation that we use here. Uh, the presentation itself should take about 45 to 50 minutes and then we will open for Q&A. So at the end of the presentation, feel free to write your questions on the chat box from the webinar or in the Q&A box from the webinar as well. So having said that, let's get started uh, just with uh, the main uh, product features for in the Soft Web Studio. So in the software studio is in a nutshell, a easy to use HMI SCADA software, but it's also a complete one. So every single feature that you expect from a complete tier, uh, first tier SCADA package is built in in the software studio. The product is quite mature. Uh, it has been developed for more than 15 years now. Uh, and Indosoft uh, nowadays has about close to 10% of the worldwide uh, market share according to the last ARC report. So both the company and the product has evolved to a maturity, maturity level uh, and we, have a, we offer a complete SCADA package with all the features built in the package. Differently from many competitors where you have to purchase different add-ons uh, to create a complete system. So uh, there are many features built in the product. I will focus here just on a brief introduction on uh, some characteristics that set Indosoft apart uh, in the industry. Like the fact that we offer a single development environment. You create the application once and you can deploy the same application, the same objects, the same scripts, uh, the, the same project to any operating system supported by Microsoft from Windows Mobile 6.5 to Windows CE, Windows Embedded, XP, Vista, Windows 7, Windows 2003 Server or Windows 2008 Server 32 or 64 bits. So it's a single development environment to create the application once and you can deploy applications, templates, objects on any Microsoft OS from the low-end HMIs where you have the mobile devices or the local HMIs, all the way up to the uh, control, uh, uh, control rooms where we have the desktop PCs or server PCs. And we also uh, have a commitment to keep 100% of compatibility with applications created in previous versions. So this is a real screenshot from an application running uh, back in 1997 on the old Cassiopeia uh, PDA running Windows C 1.0. And we literally copied the application folder from that device to a computer with Windows 7 and run the same application with the most recent version of Windows Software Studio on Windows Server. So it represents an advantage to the system integrator and end user to protect the investment you made when you decided to design the application and deploy the application with the Indosoft solution. 
Systems evolve in the Indusoft software, we keep evolving, new operating systems become available, new hardware platforms become available, but we offer a smooth path for you to upgrade your applications to new platforms uh, where you do not have to redesign the system. And we have real case studies where uh, end users uh, uh, took advantage of this feature and we have some testimonies here that I'll briefly describe during the presentation. Connectivity is one of the main advantages of Indosoft. Uh, differently from many competitors, Indosoft is a software only company. So our idea is to make the software as open as possible and give you the capability to acquire any data through any network and make this information available on any device. So uh, on the communication with the controllers, with the PLCs, with the IOs, we offer more than 240 native communication drivers to different protocols like Modbus RTU or ASK, Modbus over TCP IP, Modbus Plus, uh, uh, for all the Rockwell PLCs, PLC2, 3.5, Sleek PLCs, Contralogics, Micrologics PLCs, Siemens PLCs, uh, S7200, 300, 400, all the Omron PLCs, GE, Fanuc, uh, Beckoff. So all those drivers, more than 240 native communication drivers are installed along with the product. Uh, you don't have to purchase uh, an add-on to use those native drivers. Uh, and in addition to the native drivers, we also offer the OPC client modules. OPC DA, OPC UA, and .NET, the former OPC XI, also as built-in modules uh, in the software studio. And even if you need to encapsulate protocols through a modem or a TCP IP encapsulation or UDP IP encapsulation for serial protocols, those features are built-in in the product. So you can either use native drivers to communicate with your controllers, your RTUs, or use OPC or even both. We do not enforce one technology or the other. We make them all available and uh, when you design the system, you pick the, the technologies that best suit your project. Also, based on an open architecture, uh, Indosoft publishes some APIs like the Driver Toolkit, which would allow you to create new communication drivers to Indosoft Web Studio by yourself. Uh, in case you have devices that have uh, proprietary protocols not supported by Indosoft, which is rare, but you have the flexibility to create your own drivers, as well as the Tags Database API, uh, which allows you to integrate systems uh, created in any other language, in C, C++, C Sharp, VB, VB.NET, to Indosoft Web Studio. Since Indosoft Web Studio is a complete SCADA package, uh, Mostly you have all the tools you need for your application built in in the package, but if you want or need to integrate a legacy system to your SCADA solution, you have the flexibility to do that with the Tags Database API. So Indosoft Web Studio is not a black box, it's a completely open, uh, is a software based on a completely open architecture. To exchange data with databases, we have many built-in features like XML, support for ODBC, OLEDB, ADO. I'll talk about databases uh, in the next slides here. Uh, and we still support DDE. It, it is uh, old technology, but we keep in the product for the commitment to keep 100% of compatibility with applications created in previous versions of the product. We have built-in tools like the TCP IP client and server for redundancy. You can run uh, highly redundant systems uh, where, for instance, in hot standby uh, configuration where two servers run the same application, but the only the first one is pulling data from the PLCs. If the first computer goes down, the second one automatically takes over the communication with the PLCs, the IOs, and the thin clients switch automatically from the hot server to the standby server. And a few weeks ago, we uh, had a webinar, one hour webinar, just describing this solution in details. It's very simple to, to deploy. We have templates and you can just import this configuration to your application. 
uh, and you can visualize those videos from the Indosoft website as well. We also offer the OPC server module built in the product, so you can expose tag values from Indosoft to any other system with an OPC client. And all this information is available not only locally where you run the application, but also from remote stations, remote devices, from cell phones, tablets, or regular PCs where you might want to access the information. And in a few other slides, I'll talk in details about those possibilities. So really quick about database connectivity, Indosoft invested heavily to create a state-of-art interface to any SQL relational database. SQL Server, Oracle, Sybase, MySQL, even historians like OzyPy, uh, simpler databases like Microsoft Access or even an Excel spreadsheet. So from Indosoft, uh, without any scripting, you can save uh, history data like alarm history, event history, or trend history, uh, and retrieve this data with the grid control from any SQL relational database using standard technologies like ODBC, OLIDB, ADO, and ADO.net, and even with built-in features like redundancy and store and forward, uh, but everything with a very easy configuration interface. You pretty much follow some wizards, create your connections, and the Indosoft creates the SQL statements uh, behind the scenes to you. If you want to customize, uh, create custom reports and things like that, you have the flexibility to do that as well using built-in tasks like the database worksheets or even the built-in functions for database connectivity. Uh, and here are some examples uh, of uh, graphical interfaces that can save and retrieve data from SQL relational databases like the trend control where you have several built-in features uh, where you do not have to configure or program. You just click on the, on the icons from the toolbar during the runtime. And you have features like zoom in, zoom out, stack different pens uh, on the trend or show them sharing the same Y X, add pens on the fly, remove pens on the fly, uh, show statistical process control information like average, mean, and maximum value, standard deviation, and all those features are built in without add-ons and without uh, any scripting or, or complex configuration required. In recently, we also invested a lot to improve the performance when retrieving massive amount of data from SQL relational databases. We created a feature called decimation in the product uh, where you can retrieve a lot of data in the database but Indosoft automatically retrieves only the minimum set of data for the resolution that you have in your trained control. So using this, uh, this feature, which is pretty much just check a checkbox here to enable decimation, we are able to release, for instance, more than a million points from SQL Server in a couple of seconds. So when you want to analyze data saved over a long period of time, like several months or even years, this feature comes really handy and provides a, a high performance even if you use a standard SQL relational database like SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL, and so on and so forth. About deployments, Indosoft gives you the flexibility to create the application in any PC where you have the development environment. And once the application is done, you can download it to an embedded device or mobile device running Windows CE or to a local HMI running Windows Embedded or Windows CE as well, or even to PCs or servers in the control room running Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows Vista, 2003 server or 2008 server, R2, 32 or 64 bits. Optionally, you can even deploy the application on the cloud. We had two webinars already available to download from our website where we described our cloud solution in details. But after you deploy the, develop the application, you have the flexibility to download it, to install it in many different platforms, either on premises or even in a private or public cloud. And uh, once the application is running, retrieving data from one or more different PLCs through one or more different protocols, 
you can make this information available, the, the online data and the history data, to remote users using different Think Client solutions supported by Indosoft. So the Web Think Client solution is the solution for remote users that want to access the application using Internet Explorer web browser. Uh, by doing that, uh, as, as long as the remote user enters a correct username and password, they can visualize the entire application, the graphical screens, online data, history data, and the same application that you configured for the local visualization for the local user is automatically available to the remote thin clients. You don't have to develop additional screens only for the web thin clients. And from the Functionality point of view, everything available to the local users is available as well to the remote users, but using the built-in security system from Indosoft, you can restrict what the remote users can see and do. Uh, the Secure Viewer is the solution uh, for remote stations where you do not want to use the web browser. So you install an Indosoft application called Indosoft Secure Viewer, which does not require local license. And when you run it, it connects to the server and shows the application in full screen mode for the remote users. But each remote user can navigate through the screens independently from each other. And using this solution in combination with the Microsoft Terminal Services, you can even visualize the applications in non-Microsoft devices like iPads, Android tablets, or cell phones. So it's not only for the Microsoft platforms. And the Studio SMA solution is uh, a uh, very simple and easy to configure solution for any device, any mobile device, cell phone, tablets, or even PCs uh, running any operating system. All you need is a web browser. So even if you have a simple cell phone with an old version of the web browser, you are able to use the SMA Thin Clients to visualize tag values in online alarms. And from the mobile device, you can even acknowledge alarms or change some set points as long as you have uh, correct credentials to do that. So the idea is you deploy the application in one server or redundant servers, and then you make this information available not only locally, but remotely as well to remote thin clients where you do not have to install in the software the studio, the application or the license. And we have demos uh, running uh, on our server on the cloud to demonstrate the thin client solution. You can access the web thin client live demo from this URL and uh, from any Windows operating system with Internet Explorer, you can visualize the applications, navigate through the screens and so on and so forth. Uh, using the Secure Viewer Thin Client, uh, you can go to this link uh, from the Indosoft website. It's a blog which gives you the simple instructions to use uh, an iPad or an Android device as a Thin Client for the Indosoft application. And after you follow those instructions, you'll be able to connect to the Indosoft demo and also navigate through different screens and uh, change set points, see online data, history data, alarm, trends, and so on and so forth. From any device that uh, uh, supports a remote desktop application. And there is the SMA live demo, uh, also available from, from this link from the Indosoft website. And in this case, from any device, any mobile device with a web browser, you will be able to visualize tag values from the application and online alarms as well. And you have the username and password to access this, these applications running on the Indosoft server on the cloud. Recently, uh, another feature that is very important for uh, most water wastewater projects is the ability to send remote notifications by emails or SMS messages, text messages. So in the soft, we have a built-in feature to send alarms or critical alarms or reports by email. And recently, we uh, enabled the option to support SSL, Security Socket Layer, and by doing that, your Indosoft is able to send remote notifications 
even through SMTP servers from Gmail or Hotmail or any uh, email server that supports security socket layer. And LDAP is another important feature in many projects as well. In the software studio, you have the ability to configure the security system locally with the local usernames and passwords. Uh, or also just check a checkbox here in the security system for domain and automatically share the users and groups and passwords and the security system policies from your uh, corporate network. So you do not have to duplicate the security system management on the IT level and on the control level. You can share the Active Directory users and groups from your Windows uh, network. This is an option if you want to keep the security system for the SCADA individual, you just select the option local only and configure your users and groups for the SCADA application independently from the Windows uh, Active Directory configuration. So this is a brief overview about some important features uh, used in most projects for water and wastewater uh, applications. And I'll briefly talk about some case studies here, uh, but if you want further information about any one of those case studies, feel free to contact us later, or you can also download those case studies from the Indosoft website. So I just pulled a few examples here. Uh, this is a uh, uh, pumping system automation developed by uh, Precision. And what is important is uh, uh, after the system was deployed within the software studio with the schedules to turn the pumps on and off automatically with alarms to uh, report inefficiencies or problems with the pumps and with remote notifications, uh, the end user was able to reduce the power consumption from 30 to 70%, depending on the time of the day, which is huge, and reduce the water requirements as much as 90%. So the system paid by itself in a matter of weeks. It was a huge improvement from the way how they were uh, uh, operating the system before without a HMI, without a visualization system with the capabilities to automate uh, the actions and give visibility, immediate visibility when problems arise and when actions need, need to be taken. Uh, another system here is for, uh, sorry, one back here, SJE Rumbles, it's a sewage control system uh, they've developed a kind of template that they customize for each project, but pretty much using the software studio, they are able to control the, the wastewater uh, plant treatments, the, the pumping system for sewage as well, and not only provide local control for those plants and pump stations, but especially remote control using the Indo Software Studio web thing client solution and Studio Mobile Access. So they also uh, implemented remote notification and the ability to monitor the system uh, remotely using a web browser from a regular PC or even from a mobile device. ITT Flowtronics is one of the most uh, complete uh, HMI systems for pumping controls. Uh, this application runs on local HMIs with Windows CE, uh, but it's a very, very complete application. So they can do anything from scheduling to uh, event logging, alarm logging, trend logging. Uh, they can customize the system. So the application is a, is a unique application that they developed with Indosoft. And when they deploy this application in different systems, uh, they go to configuration screens during the runtime and define how many pumps they have, the mode of operation for those pumps, the type of pumps they have, and the system pretty much operates. operates uh, the same application operates with in different golf uh, camps with different pumping systems uh, using the same original core application. So it's a cookie cutter and they are able to configure the system during the runtime and they generate uh, reports automatically and send them by emails. 
Uh, they are able to visualize the information remotely from WebThin clients. So it's a very, very complete system. Uh, St. Clair Water Treatment Facility uh, also deployed a large system to control the water treatment from St. Clair uh, Water Treatment Facility within the software studio. This is, we are seeing a huge demand for uh, infrastructure in general in Middle East and in Asia as well. And this is a uh, water treatment uh, completely automated within the software studio uh, running 24 seven. And this one, uh, this particular one was deployed in Egypt. Xenia, Ohio uh, was a plant where they use Indo software studio to uh, send remote notifications when critical alarms arise. And then their main problems were the fines they were receiving for not complying to the uh, regulatory, for, for not having regulatory compliance. So with the new system, uh, whenever problems arise in the soft sends remote notifications to the users, uh, to the operators and supervisors that are uh, working on that particular shift so they are able to fix the problem in the shortest period of the of time and according to the to the end user the pay, the payback was nearly immediate because the cost of the system was less than a single fine for violations and since they deployed the system uh, they told us they were not uh, they didn't incur in any new violation whatsoever so now I'll pass control to Bill Glover from interworks.net and uh, he will describe the, uh, uh, the SCADA system he designed and deployed within the software studio with the city of Rocky Hill. So Bill, uh, whenever you are ready, feel free to share your desktop. Okay, well, good morning, afternoon, evening. Um, let me... Uh Share my desktop here real quick. Uh, here we go. We got it there, Fabio? Yes. Okay. Um, just a little bit, a little bit about me. Um, I'm uh, the chief engineer at uh, Innerworks.net. Um, we do controls, control panels, uh, full automation integration. Uh, as well as just consulting work. Uh, we, we primarily work in the water and wastewater, uh, the warehouse controls and food processing. So we kind of have a, a, a three-tier um, avenue that we go to the market uh, working with customers. Uh, but we do PLCs, programming, data automation. Uh, we just celebrated our 10th anniversary last year. And in, in all 10 years, we've been doing uh, uh, web-based, uh, PC-based and PDA-based, um, mainly because of Visusoft was what they've had. I mean, we've been involved with them um, back from the late 90s, 1990s, uh, looking at their uh, data package and their, their CE-based uh, work and their all the different platforms. Uh, but we're going to focus on the on the application we did, uh, Rock Hill. Um, and this is a presentation or some information we did on uh, for another webinar uh, that we've uh, modified for this one. And basically, the city of Rock Hill in South Carolina, uh, we started off um, with their wastewater plant, and they had a, a mainframe-based system uh, prior to 1999. You know, they were worried about the 2000 um, uh, bug and all that stuff with the mainframe stuff. And, they switched out and upgraded a lot of their controls, the uh, PLC-based controls, and they got with us to set up an HMI package, a PC-based package, and we went with uh, Indusoft and uh, pretty much uh, retrofitted the complete wastewater plant. Um, and then we went, moved on from the wastewater plant and um, retrofitted and upgraded all the controls and uh, to get a package to water plant, which is what we're going to focus on this uh, presentation um, and just to real briefly you know uh, what how the water plant in uh, Rock Hill works I'm here's a little map Rock Hill is just south of Charlotte North Carolina on the Lake Wiley um, Lake and that's where they draw the water from um, 
here's an overview picture of the water treatment plant. Um, you can see the, 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 the filter, you can see the influent tower uh, here. Um, you can see the flocculator, settling basin, the, the filter section, uh, lab control. Um, and you can see the, uh, the clear well run off the high service pumps, which then goes up to the city. Uh, one thing that the city of Rockville's got at their water plant is a reuse system. So all the water that they use uh, for um, uh, cleaning out the filters and the, the flocculators and everything else goes back into a clarifier and then goes back into a, a reuse uh, cleaning system uh, process into a, a reuse clear well. And they use that for uh, sprinkling on, um, uh, you know, for the yard, for they have a big soccer field there in the city. Uh, they have a lot of um, a, a green space that they use for watering. They use this reuse uh, water. Uh, so instead of just sending it to the wastewater plant, they actually reuse this water um, throughout the city. Um, and you can kind of see a flow here. You know, the water comes in through the flow. And if you've done any work with the water, water treatment, you know how it all works. But just in case you don't, uh, the water comes in from the lake, into the influence, the flocculators, the southern basins, uh, to the clear wells, and then out to the water towers. But the reuse system takes all that um, water that they use to uh, backwash the filters, and they bring it back into the clear well, clean it back up, and send it out to uh, the sprinkler systems and um, in, you know anywhere they can use non-potable water out through the city. Um, and then any water that they don't use for reuse, then they send over to the wastewater plant. And that's the overview of the wastewater plant, which is all done through uh, with Indusoft and um, uh, PLC controls and, and whatnot. Um, just a little bit about the influence. Um, at the influence station, uh, we did all the control panels there in the influence, uh, brought back right into Lake Wiley into the influence. And from the influence goes into the flocculators. Um, and here's another control panel for the, the, the flocculators. And that's all connected. Um, there's probably about 11,000 I.O. points throughout this whole plant that are brought, brought back into some redundant servers, which I'll show a picture of that uh, shortly. Um, we use uh, PC-based uh, web, uh, PC-based SCADA views. We use secure viewers. And we also use some web base throughout the plant, and we'll show those in a little bit. Uh, here's the flocculator panels with the, the drives. Um, we've got AB reactors, the uh, GS drives that control the flocculators, uh, so they take the water and mix it up and, and add the chemicals to get the solids out. Um, and then, of course, we've got the track max to clean out the settling basin, and that's all. Uh, panels that we built and put in there. Um, then the sand filters is where the water is being filtered through um, the, the final stage prior to get the chemicals and put them to the clear wells before it's sent out to the, the city. Um, so it just takes all the small particles out of the water. And then here's a, there's, there's that, uh, six settling basins, uh, each one having a control panel. Um, on each of the basins, which controls the, the filters, and then we have an automatic backwash system in there uh, that controls them. And then we also have all six filters that are controlled uh, with the flow rate um, to give an overall flow rate to the, to the plant. And we control each flow rate of each control of each fil filters to give us a complete flow rate um, to the whole system. And we build all those panels. Um, and then in that seven basin um, uh, uh, area, we've got a, a thin client, an uh, Indusoft thin client you can see there, where you can go to any of the web, uh, any, of the, any of the SCADA pages um, at that station. We've got stations throughout the whole plant. So any of these stations, you can see anything that's going on throughout the rest of the plant. So when the operator goes out and looks at one part of the plant, and he hears an alarm or needs to check something on the other side of the plant, he can go to any of these uh, thin client stations and view what's happening anywhere within the, uh, in the plant. 
Uh, we've got nine thin client stations uh, throughout the facility. Um, and you can go, to, like I said, to any of those um, screens, and we'll show some of the screens here shortly. Um, there in the line silo, this is uh, right after the filters. There's some final chemicals that are put in the, the water uh, prior to put in the, uh, the, the clear wells. Uh, some more panels, some more controls. Um, and then here's the chemical distribution of the final chemicals before it goes to the clear wells, before it gets distributed. Um, here's just one another panel that's out in the uh, drain pump station. Um, works closely with the city of Rock Hill. Um, their, their chief engineer, uh, John White, is pictured here as well as I am, uh, next to one of the a large control panel with some pump um, and VFD motors. Um, and then, of course, the, the clear well you know, to take all those reuse. And there's a picture of um, the reuse station out in the reuse building. Um, and then, of course, all the water goes out to the clear wells. And then, of course, the high service pumps uh, pump it out into the system uh, to the water towers and to all the, um, the people in the city for their water. Um, the sludge pump panel, uh, powerhouse control. Um, so we've got the, the nine thin client stations. Um, back up. They got the nine thin. Sorry, pretty weak. Got the nine thin uh, clients throughout the city, throughout the water plant, and then we've got the main server in a central location of the powerhouse, uh, right next to some generators, and that's where all the uh, servers are, as well as the um, uh, in the cell. Um, we've got some think and do uh, control nodes that are controlling the process of the water plant, and then we've got uh, two um, in the cell servers that are run with the redundancy that uh, Fabio talked about earlier. And with redundancy, that allows us, um, you know, to keep up 24-7, um, you know, and redundancy. And we've had a couple occasions where we've had some PC issues of the main server would drop out and the redundant server would pick up and take over, uh, not losing a beat. And, you know, the operators don't even know it except for a little indication at the top of each data page. Uh, um, that's telling them that they're running on the backup, so that they know something's happened in the main server and somebody needs to take a look at it. But that has happened in the past uh, six years. We've had a PC failure uh, once, but with the redundancy, we didn't lose a beat, um, which they just love that. Um, of course, you know, run 24 7. Um, all of it's on a fiber backbone throughout the whole plant. Um, and then here's a, a picture of the reuse system. We use system using some UV filters to filter uh, the water for fire going out to the sprinklers and industrial use. Uh, again, there's a, a picture of the, the Indusoft um, um, data page out in the reuse building so they can see what's going on with the operators out there. Um, and then we've got the fan filter as part of that reuse system. Another panel that was put together to control the process. Now, here's an overview of, of the current uh, application as it stands. And you can see we've got uh, uh, automation direct hardware, uh, MPLCs throughout the plant, uh, think and do control nodes within the um, generator building. And then we've got a picture of where all the Indusoft stations are located throughout the plant. Uh, one in the chemical building, a couple of uh, main um, administrative buildings, uh, one out in the uh, filter console area, one in the generator building, one out in the reuse building, and two in the chemical uh, process. So anywhere the operator is, they can get access uh, to a SCADA station to see what's happening throughout the plant. Um, one of the things that we're going to be doing next is um, putting in uh, some um, a PDA so if they're out not near a station, or if the, um, the plant manager's uh, gone for the day, she can log in and see what's going on. And it's a view-only environment, because uh, a lot of um, municipalities have uh, control and you know, um, the 9-11 and stuff. You don't want 
going to control anything or have access to anything, but we've got some, some visualization of some history that they'll be able to view to see you know, what the flow rates are, what some of the chemical rates are, and that's all through the secured connection through the same client uh, or the PDA. Um, and then we've also done a lot of their pump stations and the wastewater plant. Here it happens to be with their largest uh, um, sewage pump station uh, monitored through the Indusoft throughout the, at the, um, at the, uh, the wastewater plant. Uh, they also have thin clients uh, set out um, in a couple of remote locations at the operations center of the city of Rock Hill. They have an um, uh, emergency operations center, kind of like a, it's a high-tech uh, wall of computers, and they can see any of the cameras, electrical system, water, wastewater, in case they have some kind of emergency, they can control everything from the operations center if they need to. Uh, but then we also have a couple of web uh, viewers, uh, the utility director um, and a couple other people can view the water plant through a web, web um, browser and see what's going on at the water and the wastewater plant. Uh, now here's a couple of screenshots of what we did there at the water plant. Uh, here's an overview picture which shows the, the filters, the seven basins, and you know any of those areas you can click on them. So it says, um, it says you were to you were to click on the filter area right here, brings up a, a larger view, and you can see you know each filter. There's six filters. If they're in cascade mode, automatic mode, what their flow rates are, uh, what's happening there, their their current flow rate, total rates are, and then you can actually zoom in even closer to each filter and see what's going on in each of the um, uh, the valves, the flow rates, the turbidity, uh, if it's a backwash, what step of the backwash it's in. Um, and these 3D graphics are nice. They're not they're not very hard to do. Um, uh, IndieSoft's really easy to put all that stuff in there. But one of the things that the operators use uh, mainly is a summary screen where we can show all the, the primary stuff, uh, the lake intake, the, the basins, um, the filters, the water towers, uh, the chemical rates, and that's kind of what they see. But if they want to see more detail, they can click on any one of these uh, titles, which will bring them into a detailed view of each screen. Uh, we've also got a lot of trending. Uh, we're trending stuff live and historical. Uh, it's really useful for them if they've got stuff that's happened overnight over the weekend, see what happened. Um, they can actually choose which which values they want to put on the trend chart, um, if they want to change the, uh, the duration, uh, if they want to look at historical nodes, look at uh, past days, previous days, and see what's going on. It helps them for flow rates and the water level, see what's going on, chemical values of how the plants ran um, in the previous days. Uh, here's a screenshot of a, a high service pump. Uh, pumping the water out into the distribution system. Um, here's the one on the, uh, the chemical facility. Um, and it, you know, these are really fancy, nice graphics. So it's nice for um, you know for tours um, when they bring in people to tour the plant. Uh, they're able to show what's going on. Um, the other, other nice thing is, is like any of the new operators that they're not really familiar with the SCADA system, with this being a much more uh, realistic representation of the plant, it helps them visualize where things are at and what's going on, so it helps in some of the training as well um, for each of the operators and any new users, um, as well as kind of, uh, you know, doing the tours and explaining to the city what's going on at the water plant, how it works. Uh, here's another screenshot of the, the water towers. It shows the water level of each tower, uh, the water pressure, the valves are open. Um, so it's a good, quick view of you know their current process and what's going on, how much water they have. Uh, you can see this one water tower is out of service. There's no water in it. They were actually probably worked on it that day. Um, but uh, so you know, there's a lot of benefits um, with the remote viewing um, uh, of the web-based uh, data, as well as we're moving into some PDA. Um, they, the PDA, the wastewater plant has the PDA viewing uh, for quite some time. It's been very useful. The plant uh, manager uh, who's been out on uh, conferences, they go to the beach uh, every year for a water conference, and he's able to monitor.
monitor the plant, and in fact, a lot of the other um, plant managers throughout South Carolina are very jealous because they'll be able to sit there and view what's going on at this plant where they're unaware of what's happening at the plant uh, and how things are, you know, processing it, it back at home. And gives them a little piece of the mind of what's happening uh, so they can see what's going on. Um, and we're going to be moving to the PDA at the water plant and as well as looking at doing a lot of the same stuff on the electrical side of the plant. And so once the electrical stuff's done, the whole city will be controlled and monitored through Indusoft, um, which is just a, a huge benefit for them because it's a very um, similar process. Instead of having different data packages and different pieces of hardware, they've tried to uh, standardize and have the same package throughout the whole city so that it's a lot easier in maintenance and maintenance costs and spare parts. Um, they don't have to have three different data packages, three different types of PLCs, five different types of uh, drives, and have to train on all the different pieces of hardware. Um, but so you know, we've got a lot we did there. Uh, we've done some other municipalities, um, but just you know, we're available for any questions. Um, there's my contact information, and I guess I'll turn it back over to you, Fabio. Yes, well, excellent. Thank you so much, Will, uh, Bill. It, it, it was excellent and very, very informative. And now I uh, uh, would like to open for Q&A. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to write them on the chat box or even on the Q&A box. And Bill and I uh, will be more than happy to address uh, any questions you might have. Uh, there is one question here asking for additional information about the historian performance with the decimation. Uh, really quickly, what happens is uh, when you create a trend control on the screen to retrieve history data, typically Indosoft goes to the database and retrieves all points for the duration that you selected and shows the points on the screen. Uh, the, the point is, uh, if you are reading uh, a few points, let's say at 1,000 points, 2,000 points, uh, no big deal, we can retrieve those points and retrieve on the screen. Uh, depending on the sampling rate, if you select a period like one year or, or more, we could be talking about more than a few million points. Uh, so especially if you are in a thin client, tr uh, sending all those values from the database through the network to the server and then to the thin client can take a lot of bandwidth and a lot of time as well. So in the trend control under advanced, you have a new option called decimation. Uh, and by default in applications created with 7.0, service pack one or newer, it comes checked by default. And you define here how many points you want to bring at the most from the database. And it has to do with the resolution on your screen. For example, if your trend control has, uh, let's say, a thousand pixels of width, uh, it, it's a ways to bring more than this number of points because uh, all you're doing is bringing more information to draw the points on top of each other. It doesn't change the resolution, doesn't change the information visualized by the user. So here in max points, you can pretty much define the resolution you want to read. So in, in general, a, a rule of thumb, this number should be uh, equal to the width of your trend control in pixels. And then Indosoft sends the request to the database. But before the information is sent back to the viewer, to the graphical interface, this information is decimated. And Indosoft sends to the viewer only the minimum number of points necessary to visualize the information for the period of time required without losing resolution. But the bandwidth in the network and the time to transfer the data is much shorter. So let's see if we have more questions. Uh, one, one question for you, Bill. 
what protocol do you use and how is the architecture of communication? Um, using uh, automation direct uh, PLCs and it's uh, over all over TCPIP, uh, Modbus TCPIP, mm -hmm. um, communicating and uh, we've got, uh, like I said, we've got the main uh, think and do stations which are doing the control out to the PLCs and then uh, we're using the OPC up from the think and do stations up to the Indusoft uh, servers. Great, which is a great advantage as well, Bill. Uh, it's important to choose the standards and uh, what I nice about the architecture that Bill put together is that it was well thought through with a lot of, uh, uh, of uh, room for uh, expansions in the future. Uh, but the fact that Indusoft supports different drivers and OPC and you can run them all in parallel, Indusoft can be the consolidator of all those different devices that support different protocols, Modbus could be proprietary protocols as well. So you could have a hybrid system, but using the software as the common layer uh, to consolidate information from different PLCs, different sensors, different IOs. Uh, there is a compliment here to you, Bill. Great presentation. And uh, he's asking what package you use to develop your 3D backgrounds. Um, um, that's one of my other, one of the other guys here that do it. Um, we use um, uh, Adobe, a lot of Adobe um, packages to do the graphics. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the nice thing is wh whatever tool you use, whether it, it is Adobe or AutoCAD or 3D Max, uh, you can literally render the, the screen on the graphical software and then copy there and paste in the software studio. And, and then you can create the animations on top of it. Uh, one question here, if we're gonna place this video on YouTube, it's probably too large for YouTube. Uh, we will uh, try to do that, but it will be posted on the Indusoft website for sure. Another question here, can the max points be a tag or can it be configured on the fly? Uh, the in this particular system, and Bill, let me know if you did differently, but uh, you have a license that supports a maximum number of points. And as the system evolves, as they, they, they add new PLCs, new, uh, uh, new plants, new devices to the plant, they can open the development environment, uh, create new driver worksheets, configurations, new drivers, save them, and uh, even without shutting down the runtime, they can enhance the system, they can add new points, new tags to the system on the fly without shutting down the system. And even if they want for whatever reason, shut down, backup, whatever it is, since they are using redundant servers, uh, they can do that in one server while the other one keeps running and vice versa. Another question here is, uh, is the Windows CE portion of the SCADA package only a client to an HMI server or PC? Is it possible to host the HMI server from Windows CE device? The, the answer is it, Windows CE device can be either a thin client from a, a PC or you can run the actual application on the CE device itself. Uh, a few case studies I showed before like the ITT Flowtronics for example, they run the application natively on the CE device. So uh, you can run the application on Windows CE, on local HMIs with Windows CE, Windows XP Embedded, Windows XP, Windows 7, uh, but you can definitely uh, uh, run the application on Windows CE as well, as well as the other uh, Microsoft operating systems. Or you can use the Windows CE devices as thin clients as well as Windows 7 or Windows XP as thin clients. So to answer our question uh, shortly, uh, Windows CE can be either the server running the application or the thin client from a remote server.
another question here if it's possible to uh, use the thin client on windows phone it is possible to use the uh, secure viewer thin client on the windows phone using a remote desktop connection uh, and the instructions are in that blog as well as the SMA thin client is supported on the windows phone as well and in the software studio version 7.1 uh, which will be released within two months, more or less, uh, will provide a, a enhanced version of uh, the SMA Thin Client, which will provide more graphical capabilities like Alarm Align, Alarm History, Trend Align, Trend History, and graphical widgets like gauges or bar graphs that can be visualized on any device with a browser that supports HTML5. Uh, a question for you, Bill. Does Indosoft read data from the Think and Do servers or do they read data directly from the PLCs? And if they don't read from Indosoft, can Indosoft be configured to do so? Yeah, currently all the, all the Think and Do's are talking to the PLCs to, to pull all the information back um, and because we're doing a lot of control uh, between PLCs and passing information back to between PLCs, and then uh, all the information from the Think and Do servers are bringing or coming up into the Indusoft. Mm -hmm. So we could talk from Indusoft to the PLCs, but since we need them, we need them, most all that information in for control purposes. Uh, we bring them all back into the the, the different uh, Think and Do stations, the Think and Do uh, control server PCs, and then bring all this stuff from those up to the Indusoft data packages. Servers. Excellent. And Indosoft has a native driver for Thinking Do, and uh, they can communicate as well using uh, OPC. Uh, are you using the native driver or the OPC interface, Bill? Uh, currently, just the OPC. The OPC, yeah. Either way is possible. Uh, uh, one question if we are developing a iPhone application yet. Uh, the Secure Viewer uh, Thin Client with Windows Remote Desktop Connection runs on the iPhone as an app. Uh, and the link I provided in the previous slide shows you the instructions on how to run on the iPhone. And uh, the Enhanced SMA uh, Thin Client in version 7.1 will allow you to visualize uh, alarm line, alarm history, trend line, trend history, tag values, and those widgets. Uh, using the Safari, the, the web browser from the iPhone or Android devices as well. iPhone, iPad, iPads, any web browser that supports HTML5. Uh, one question, I want to know the difference between Secure Viewer and Thin Client. Uh, actually, Secure Viewer is a Thin Client. A Thin Client is a station where you do not have to install the completing the software Web Studio package, the license, and the application. And we support three different types of thin clients. Web thin client, when you use Internet Explorer as the web browser, uh, where you can visualize the whole application. Secure Viewer thin client, when you install an application from Indosoft called Secure Viewer, and then you can visualize it natively on any Windows platform, but you see the full screen, you don't use the web browser. Uh, you see the application as an uh, Indosoft app itself in full screen mode. And you can also visualize in no Microsoft devices using a remote desktop connection, where each remote user can navigate through the screens individually. And the third type of Thin Client is the SMA Thin Client, where you can visualize uh, information from no Microsoft devices using a web browser. Uh, many questions here about the tool you used to create the 3D graphics bill. It looks like it was a big hit. Uh, one question is, how easy it is for the customer to create and manage historical data reports? Uh, in, in the software studio, we have here in tasks the option trained. You just create different groups here, define how fast you want to save them, and you can save them directly to a database. And then on the screen, you can retrieve this data using either the uh, trend control or the grid control can retrieve data directly from the database. 
and then you can use built-in features to uh, save it, dump it into PDF reports or CSV reports, uh, or even send directly to the printer. Uh, one more question is, if it is possible to run Indosoft in a virtual environment, VMware? The answer is yes, Indosoft runs in virtual machines. Uh, th there are some precautions that you have to, to use uh, in regards to the license, like for instance, if you use hard key, you have to make sure that the USB port from the computer is available for the virtual machine where you are running Indosoft. Uh, but the answer is yes, we have many applications running in virtualized environments. So we're getting to the end uh, of the, the presentation, but uh, I want to take uh, a minute to uh, thank you, Bill, for the excellent presentation and uh, for uh, kindly help Indosoft to co-host this webinar. And thanks especially everybody, all the participants, uh, thanks for taking the time for the presentation and for your questions. Uh, we'll, we'll send uh, the PowerPoint presentations and uh, the video link to you shortly. And if you have further questions about in the software studio or Interworks, uh, feel free to contact me or Bill directly and we'll, we will be more than happy to address your questions. Once again, thank you everybody and uh, hope to see you again in the next in the software webinar within two weeks. Have a great day.